the most dramatic moments on paternity court. And my family never stepped up about it, even after my mom passed away. I felt like, would I have to be on my deathbed to find out like if he's not my dad? Like, that's not fair to me. You are not related to Alina <laughs> Carthy. Are you certain this other gentleman is her biological father? <laughs> hey, Miss Fleming, on behalf of her son, took the stand and sued Miss Jemison for alleged baby-related deception. Yep, and even provided proof that the baby daddy wanted this as well. Brace yourselves for a paternity roller coaster where doubt and desperation were about to collide head on. Here we go. Your Honor, it's so important to me, first of all, because I love Adriana and I love Alina. My family needs to know. We need to know the truth. My son has asked me several times. He explains that he does not want his family to not be certain. So that is why we're here today. And there have been several things that have taken place. Now the baby mama and Miss Jemison's relationship started like a comedy of errors. Baby Alina's paternity was as clear as mud. The defendant was indeed not 100% positive that Mr. Carthen was her guy, but she managed to back up her claim by a sixth digit though. See for yourselves. Calvin was basically staying with me. You really believe Calvin is the father? Yes, Your Honor. I really believe that he's the father. There's no doubt in my mind that he's not the father of Alina at all. I know because my daughter was born with a six digit and that the extra digit Your is Honor. genetically passed from the father's side of the family. Well, it certainly takes more than one trait to find a resemblance. But worry not, because the baby mama had a bunch of those. Oh yeah, she launched into the whole list of them and cleverly took the other guy out of the equation. Not so fast, Missy. She's born with a lazy eye. My daughter has a lazy eye. And I did notice a while ago that Natasha had a lazy eye in the same exact eye. And it's the same thing. And my daughter was born with dimples. His grandmother has dimples. I, I don't know where the dimples come from. Right, I don't know. But his, his grandma was born with dimples. The other guy don't have dimples. He don't have an extra digit. If the baby's mommy came with medical mysteries, the plaintiff came with a witness. Yep, the dear old sister of the baby daddy. Now, she wasn't so much of a fan of her brother's girl and went into a colorful description of her, which Miss Jemison, as usual, refused to accept. I know that he was with her at times, but I've heard rumors in the beginning, not even from him, saying that, you know, exactly. she was loose. And I, was I know for loose. a I, know, I was not loose. I, I know for single. a fact. I don't know why she's so adamant because she states herself that she slept with other people. I so slept with one where other does guy. The, where do, where, yes, how do other you, people just okay, one other guy. It, it takes one time to okay. make it. The case was marred with confusion. Both parties presented their cases and both didn't seem to budge from their stances. In the midst of all this, a statement from the unavailable son was revealed, and he just tooted the same old horn. Paternity test, paternity test. Feels like the baby is his. He doesn't feel like she's not his. He doesn't like the tension. He doesn't want the tension between the two. It's only them that don't see that that's his baby. I've taken her that. to Father his previous side. jobs. I've taken her out anywhere, and people that know what he looks like and then know what I look like, when I first brought her home, when people see her, they like, wow, she looks like both of you. Well, hello, Dolly. It appears Miss Jemison brought along a witness of her own as well. And you wouldn't believe who tagged along with her, Mr. Calvin Carthen Sr. Oh yeah, the daddy of the baby daddy. Now it's a family affair through and through. I would represent my son um, and my son wishes and I know he would be here with her right now as we speak. And that's why I'm here. So you believe, <laughs> Your Honor, he hasn't that talked to your my son. son's he belief. Has. Your Honor, he hasn't it. talked to my son since my son has gotten arrested. No, he that's not true. He spoke to him last week. I put him on a three-way. Oh, yeah. spoke to that was son. the first time I in six spoke. months. I'm sorry. The moment these guys waited for and quite eagerly had finally arrived. Time to spill the paternity beans. Although Miss Fleming withdrew her claim to sue the defendant, she still wanted the real answer. Here it is. Miss Fleming and Mr. Carthon are not related to Alina Carthon. <laughs> I'm sorry, I was so not able to give you all the answer you wanted. I'm going to be 100% behind her regardless. Miss Jemison, I do have to ask, are you certain this other gentleman is her biological father? <laughs> I hate him. This baby was out for blood, though she wanted only a particular man, the defendant. She claimed he was the baby daddy. He, on the other hand, didn't fall for that trap. 
And so, fate brought them here for some much needed desperate answers. He's too busy hanging around with his homeboys, getting into every other woman he can find, and just too busy to take care of his responsibilities. Is that true, Mr. Davis? No, Your Honor, it's not correct. Why are you denying it? She want me. It's always, it's never about the kid. It's always about, oh, you want to be with me. That's a lie. Oh, that's that is a lie. Just... Nobody wants you. You want to think everybody is about you. All right, paternity maniacs, let's dive right into how all this began. Well, it was a digital love story for a digital age. What started as a casual friends with benefits arrangement wasted no time in turning into a sarcastic dance of emotions and mistrust swirling around. And they had a baby. Have you been there for the baby, Mr. Davis? Yes, ma'am, I have. He was there for her for like the first first six months. He starts slacking off. He'd come every now and then. Every two, three months, he'd come pop in for about 30 minutes. That's she'd not, cry and not. have a fit on the floor. Then he'd leave on to the next. Why, Always have why, a car full of dudes for him for when he come. Cry. I want to understand what's going on here, because it's obvious there is a lot of water under this bridge. The baby mama was on a roll. She was here to speak her heart out. And man, was she doing that flawlessly. The offer of the DNA test came up, but the question of payment got in the way, and things ended up pretty messy. He never paid for it. He came up, he didn't come when she was born, because I guess he was working then. But when he came to the hospital, he said, oh, she looks just like my my, my other son. Did you ask for a DNA test when it came to Skylar? Yes, ma'am, I did. You did? Yes. Did you ever have one? No, ma'am. So that's true, you never got the DNA test. We've seen a range of reactions to the news of pregnancy in this courtroom. However, this one phone conversation was definitely on the list of priceless. The baby daddy had a ton of doubt, and he went in quite some detail over this. When I come up, it's always her on the porch and a group of dudes. And so one day I come over, I come over to visit, and when I come, she runs straight to the back room. She runs to her room, then runs in the bathroom. She stays in the bathroom for about five, ten minutes. Her sibling runs out. He like, oh yeah, oh yeah. He's calling me her ex boyfriend name. You know what I'm saying? Kept calling. So I'm like, I'm like, Shh. I said, oh where he at? Where he at? He like, oh he just left. Well, well, well. The mysterious broken window added fuel to the fire, aka the doubt hovering over the window of conception. Mr. Davis was all too eager to show this through an exhibit. Good for us, we didn't miss out on such an entertaining occurrence. So when I come in, the window was sitting down. When you break a window from the other side, from the inside out, can't, it's not made for you to put the window back in. So the window was broke in an A, you know what I'm saying, in an A shape right here. This was bent. And it was sitting right here and didn't have enough time to fix all that up. The window's already sitting there, means that somebody oh, had already jumped through this first window. First of all, I live in a neighborhood where the maintenance ain't even good. That's why the window's like that. So, Miss Perry was a heck of a lot sure about her having no hanky-panky during the time of conception. Admittedly, she had all the fun afterward. The baby daddy, on the other hand, obviously didn't buy it. And so, he went on sharing another shenanigan of the baby mama. One day, we, we, we got into it. So I'm like, I just asked him, I'm like, so, um, so who you been chilling with lately? You know what I'm saying? Just asking, you know what I'm saying? One of my homeboys whispered something in my ear, let me know something. So I just asked, you know what I'm saying? Who you, who you been kicking with lately? Well, I let this guy, um, you know, perform, but we never did anything. I'm a man. I'm not, no, nah, that ain't happening without the other thing happening, you know what I'm saying? It ain't going down like that. It was time to close the blinds on this paternity mess, and the only way to do that was to unveil the contents of the DNA results sealed shut in that envelope. These guys already share one child. Let's see if they had another one, too. It has been determined by this court. Mr. Davis, you are the father. That's good. You said that's good? So you're happy your doubts are alleviated? Um, yeah, I'm happy to get that out of the way. That's all he uh. is, is something out of the way. He still ain't gonna do nothing after we leave here. Hold on, let me get this straight. Miss Glover is here in paternity court with her two sons, and she's claiming that they didn't father the children of two women who are standing across the aisle. Well, I guess that's one way to spice up a family reunion. Let's see how this plays out. Why do you believe your son Donnell is not the biological father of 10-month-old Ariana? Because she's a baby baby. Um, a, I don't, a maybe baby? Yes, Your Honor. What do you mean by that? Because I didn't know nothing about her until she was in the hospital um, giving birth to the baby. That was my first time meeting her, hearing anything about her. Knew nothing of her. So our alleged grandmama here was all about wanting to be in the picture. Aww. She wanted to enjoy the pregnancy process. <laughs> well, that was my takeaway from her initial testimony. But never mind that. The bottom line was she knew nothing about the girl in her son's life or the baby. 
Let's see how our defendant justifies this. No, I never knew her, but I knew her son for eight years. So for him, but she for knew him, my son not for eight years, Your Honor. Excuse me. You knew my son for eight years. If you was really a factor in his life, I would have knew you too. For but eight if years. you knew the factors in your son's life, you should That's know who in his life. We are very close. But he can father a child with a non-factor. That's understandable too. Huh? Feels like the son might be hiding something. What, can there be another affair? Or was he just using Miss Staten as his 7-Eleven? Well, that we're gonna find out in a little while. But it's shocking to find out they've been together for eight years. And our Mr. Donnell has also signed the birth certificate. I sense a contradiction. This is your signature, right, Mr. Glover? You did yes. sign the yes, birth yes, certificate. Yes, Your Honor, that's my signature. Hold on, let me, let me explain something to you real quick, Your Honor. I knew she was pregnant before she was pregnant, because I, I had that gut feeling. Now, I know I had slept with her, I had that gut feeling. So I went to her, asked her, I said, yo, you pregnant? She said, no. Now, a few months down the line, she finally admitted she was pregnant. It was other dudes. I swear, man, there's too much involvement by the parents in this case. And you know why Miss Staten doesn't recall denying Mr. Dunnell's paternity out of anger? But according to Miss Glover's son, did tell her father about the possibility of another man being the father. Now that's what you call daddy's little princess. Now, let me go back real quick. Let me flip the script back eight years before this, Your Honor. Does anybody want to go back to the beginning? This non-factor sure has oh. a lot to do with uh, your life I'm for eight I'm years. I'm finna hit you real quick, though, I think you're not admitting that you were actually in a relationship oh. with this young girl. Oh boy, get ready for this part. As according to our plaintiff, he had a hearing ability better than a Pokemon. <laughs> Just kidding. He told the court about the restaurant incident where he overheard the employees talk talking about Miss Staten. What in the world is that coincidence? Above all, he also notices her avoiding them. And after that, Mr. Donnell made a timeline in his head. I slept with Miss Staten on the 10th. Okay. Now. Of November. Yes, ma'am. All right. She said she conceived on the 30th. Now, I know math. I know she know math. That's 20 days apart. Now, I had the Jimmy on that night, Your Honor. Now, I want to know how do sperm stay front around unless I'm a bad man. 20 days. So, your point is you use protection. Yeah. Let's just cut to the chase, folks. Mr. Donnell claimed he had been involved in caring for the child since day one. Well, if that's the case, then what was the story with the doubts? Well, that was until one day he goes to meet the baby mama and finds another man sitting on the couch, calling himself the stepdad. Huh. You feel like the whole family was keeping from you the fact that she's been involved with other men and they're not telling you the whole story. Yeah. Okay, I'm now, starting now, to now understand where your doubts are coming in. No, I, you're, 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 I'm not talking about her father. Her father, hey, her father, he could tell me anything and I believe because that's how real he is. But mm -hmm. her mother, I won't believe. Oh man, this case just keeps on getting more complicated as no one was willing to cut either one some slack. Judge Lake, with enough testimony being recorded, comes in to save the day. Let's see if the baby mama did have only a friend over or someone we might have to label something else. Mr. Glover, you are not her father. I know this was a disappointment. Unfortunately, your instincts were correct. And that day you walked into the house, I think your gut feeling obviously was correct. Miss Robinson's life was shaken hard when she discovered that another man, Mr. Thompson, claimed her paternity. Confused with this situation, she came to court with a man whom she believed was her father. And now, she badly needed answers today. Me and her mother had relations uh, while Miss Fresneda was away. When Miss Fresneda came back into the picture, I stopped seeing Sonya and uh, she uh, was pregnant. When the child was born, family members came to me stating, you know, that she looks like me and things of that nature. And uh, Mr. Thompson quickly stated that when Mr. Fresneda was away, her mother was sleeping with him. And they quit their thing when Sonya got pregnant but his family members insisted that he resembled Miss Robinson. Upon this, the judge asked Miss Robinson about her bringing up. I would have never suspected that my dad, that I know as my dad, to not be my dad because he never treated me no different. So I would have never suspected. Now, he says he heard things from your family members. You've never heard those murmurings, no. whispers through the grapevine? Nobody never told me anything. They just left me in the dark. Nobody said nothing to me about it. I have to say that learning about your paternity doubt at 29 years old is not a good thing. And taking this much time, the plaintiff shared that, after her mother's death, it was her choice that Mr. Fresneda would raise her daughter. 
Then, Miss Robinson shared how she discovered her potential father. He had messaged me on Facebook and was like, hey, tell your mom that I said hi. But I just brushed it off. In 2015, he had reached out to me again that he um, sent me saying, like, hi, do you know who I am? And I had said no. And then that's when he had started explaining the situation of how he's supposed to be my dad and not George. And it was a big secret. For sure, she would have never taken it seriously. And it could be a pathetic joke. But this wasn't a joke, as Miss Robinson shared it with her aunt, and to her shock, she was informed of the same story. And further, she even asked her dad about it. I said Ladner Thompson, and then he had said kind of the same story that my Aunt Felicia told me. He said that years ago, he had came around saying that he was my dad, but my mom was saying no, and he loved my mom so much and just loved me so much that he just always said I was his daughter. Mm. It seems now Mr. Thompson's claim had some potential. But even if he believed he was the real father, he would see the mother-daughter in the town they lived in, but never tried for a DNA test. Now, it was time to know Mr. Fresneda's point of view in this story. I asked her mother, and like he says, on more than one occasion, and she always said to me that Jasmine was my firstborn, and that was good enough for me, Your Honor. We went on and had four more children after that, and they all belonged to me. He would have addressed me before he sent her a Facebook or whatever. I know he couldn't be able to find me because uh, we had no contact with each other. So both the men knew about each other. Now that's interesting. But even if they knew that something was wrong behind the curtains, it should have been addressed timely. And that's exactly what Miss Robinson argued about it, because she was hurt by this situation. Nobody told me nothing, and my family members that didn't know about it never stepped up about it, even after my mom passed away. I felt like, would I have to be on my deathbed to find out, like, if he's not my dad? Like, that's not fair to me. You know, I, I have compassion for you because I've lost my mother as well, and I know what it feels like to be a young woman in the world without your mother. It's difficult. Oh, I feel her pain. Her whole life has become a lie now, and it wasn't easy for her to accept it. As much as it was hard for her to understand, the judge brought in her aunt to testify, and she agreed to Mr. Thompson's claim very quickly. Why were you bringing it to her attention? As Jasmine was growing up, I started I started seeing a little difference in the children. You did? I, I did, but um, because Sonia always was very, very at point, she'd get angry if you brought it up. And, if you and so you remember when she dated Mr. Thompson? Oh, yes. Now, all the arrows were pointing in Mr. Thompson direction. Then, the plaintiff asserted that it was important for him that all of his kids and grandchildren should have a bond with one another, and shared that his kids were friends with Miss Robinson, to which she agreed. I called all my children and told them that there's a possibility that they have a sister. They all accepted her as their sister. And Miss Robinson, I can see from your face you still have doubts. Yeah, I don't know. It's that we're all confused. You know, we don't know. And that's why we're here today, to find out the truth. Now, with all the testimonies, we pretty much knew where this would go. But still, the real father's name was sealed in that envelope. And to get this truth out, finally, the judge was ready to read the results. It has been determined by this court. The biological father is Mr. Thompson. Thank you. That's my heart. That's my number one.